today we're going to talk about colors and how to mix colors and how to use colors in your home. So there's three primary colors. And that's every other color is made from those three colors. It's red, blue, and yellow. And every they mix and make every other color. Now all the colors in the rainbow are Roy G. Biv: red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So that's what makes up the color wheel is red, orange, yellow is the first part. Red, orange, and yellow are considered hot colors. They are hot. So you can kind of see the, hue, the, the different uh, versions of red, orange, and yellow in like this painting in my living room. And they are like passionate. They're energy colors. So if you have a whole room of red, orange, or yellow, it's going to be overpowering because it's just, you know, it just brings out that passion and emotion. Then you have green, blue, indigo, violet. So in your purples, your blues, your greens. And so you can see there's different shades of those. And also, this is why I like this picture right here, because it includes warm colors and cool colors. So I could go both ways with my living room. I could go warm or cold and uh, and it still looks uh, you know this this picture will still kind of incorporate all that together so if you want to make a really strong statement and you want to really increase the same mood you're going to put analogous colors together so those are colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel you're going to put those together so you know, for instance, you're going to put greens with blues, with purples, and so that states and restates the same mood. These throw blankets I just put over here in this basket to the side of the couch, and this purple and this blue kind of go together because they're analogous colors, and they uh, create that that real warm mood besides the fact that they are <laughs> blankets but uh, purple means uh, royalty or wealth and so uh, so it just kind of gives you that feeling of just this rich warm feeling if you want to kind of create a lot of like tension and energy in the room then you're going to put colors from the opposite sides of the color wheel for instance the most the most famous uh, complementary colors are red and green that you use at Christmas time and because they're opposite exactly opposite of each other on the color wheel and so they are always kind of kind of uh, bringing each other out making each other pop so for my Christmas decorations what I did is I used this color right here as my red and then I use this color right here as kind of my green and so this is sort of like, you know, a form of it. And uh, this is a form of the red. It's just, a, it just has other colors added to it, but they're actually opposite of each other on the color wheel. Now a hue is, is the most pure form of the color. But if you have a tint of a color, that's when you add white. And then if you add if you have a shade of a color then that's adding black and that's darkening it down now colors mean things so in this room there's all kinds of different colors now Janae you can help me on this because <laughs> Because colors can mean good things or bad things. So I'm going to tell you the good meaning of the color. And Janae, you try to think of the bad meaning of the color, okay? So, so let's start with the neutrals, okay? So this room is full of neutrals. Neutrals never go out of style. They're always in, they, and they match everything. Okay, so for instance, here's black right here. This black. All right, black means elegance. It's, it's the most powerful neutral color that there is. And it's strength. It's, and so I always put a little bit of black in a room because it just weighs down that room. It just grounds that room. 
because it's a powerful neutral. So what's the bad meaning of black? Black can mean like evil, like goth. Okay, so um, here's white right here, white. So what um, one meaning of the color of white is purity. It's, um, it's something that is, is just very lovely and light. Okay, but what's another meaning of white? I don't know. <laughs> Think of ice. Think of like, you know, like the, who's that ice queen? The snow never bothered me anyway. Right, right. So, so it can, it can be very chilling and cold. And so whenever you're putting a color in, you don't want, you don't want that bad meaning to come out. And so you got to make sure that the, the way that you present it, that it's good. Now, ivory has a sense of history. It's elegance. It is a sophistication. And so ivory never goes out of style. It's a classic color, so that's why I chose all of my all of my furniture to be the same. It's all ivory. This will be in style 25 years from now, but I can change uh, with the fads that come along, with the fashion trends that come along by just adding color, changing the color, changing the seasons, and so I can change out different pillows and different accessories to go with the that that will go with the ivory. Isn't that a good idea? Now here's brown. Brown is like a tree trunk. It stands for dependability, reliability. This, this set was given to us, and you know, nothing, if something never was in style, then it will never go out of style. So here's the floor, here's the, this, this uh, nice, strong, durable, dependable table. So what's another meaning of brown? <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna go into that. <laughs> yeah, it can be something yucky like mud, right? Is that what you were thinking? Oh, sure. Mud. And so, so that's, you know, that's the other side. It's very earthy, but it could be very dull. Now, gray is the color of our walls. And gray is very in right now, uh, as far as a, paint, a background paint color. Now, gray can, be, can mean conservative. It means just very strong and confident and conservative. So that's what we have with gray. We have it paired with white so that you, it looks crisp. And conservative and it's not the bad part of gray now what's a what's a bad meaning of gray old old yeah yeah kind of old and gray-headed or whatever and so you don't want it to look dull but you want it to look like vibrant that's why uh, with gray you have to kind of add it with whites and um, so now in here you'll, this is what they call a beige color and I have my basement in this because I have a lot of things that match beige but don't match gray. So this is beige and it's kind of like a khaki or a tan. Now beige is a is an unusual color because it can be a cool color or a warm color. So that's why it was a, it's very popular to put it like as you know the color of your house, the walls in your house, because it can take on any look that you want it to. So that's uh, that's a beige color. If you uh, look at blue. Blue stands for honesty, and it stands for um, uh, something that is just uh, very um, trustworthy. And then green, this stands for life. It stands for abundance. So if you have, you know, green corsets on the other side, it's money and envy. Um, and blue on the other side is kind of like depressing. You know, I'm so blue. You know, it's kind of, you know, uh, down color so you have to kind of you know brighten it up make it look exciting um, and and then you'll pull out those good vibes from these colors now uh, the other neutrals that there are are metallics so like like a like a bright shiny gold or a shiny silver and so the metallics that I've used in this room they will match anything but these are the gold metallics are more of the the warm, the, the hot colors. And so they're gonna bring a lot of vitality and vibrance and excitement into the room. So I've just really filled this room with lots of golds. And see these um, little figures, my kids played with them for years. They you know sat in their grandparents' house, but we just covered them with a nice metallic gold. And so that took them from the back room into the front room and now they're little centerpieces. And look, here's our family dog that we bronzed right here. Isn't he cute? 
So there's something that you can do to kind of um, to, to remake something that you had that kind of, you know, was getting old or chipped looking or whatever. And then you can see all my, my gold over here now. also other things that are considered um, a, a neutral uh, and so those are pinstripes and pinstripes basically go with everything blue goes with everything like a like blue jean skirt or whatever um, more recently uh, polka dots polka dots or small patterns like small checks or whatever those are a neutral palette that goes with everything or, or just like a you know, a pattern like this. Also, animal prints are things uh, that are considered a, uh, a neutral that go with everything. So there's also patterns that are considered neutral. And uh, especially in today's um, fashion in fashion scene, it seems like that there's lots and lots of um, different kind of patterns that we didn't see together before, but they're considered neutrals. And, and it's like leopard skin, leopard print. It goes with every color. I think it's beautiful. So that is uh, uh, just a short color lesson on how to choose the colors for your room. Now, I, uh, I almost always, off all my furniture, I choose leather because I want it to be sanitizable. I want it to be um, uh, friendly to people. And so whenever you sit in it, uh, you can spill things on it. Little kids can jump on it or, you know, they wipe their dirty hands on it or whatever, and it will still stay nice. And so this room looks elegant, but it's actually very kid friendly. And, uh, and then of course, all the color scheme changes for every season, because I get really bored with stuff and I just have to get everything changed out. But I can still, I cannot spend that much money. I can still have the same furniture and have a completely new look for every season. So that's why I chose this type of furniture for this room and this color palette. All right, that is the color lesson. Thank you, Janae, for your help. <laughs>